Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. A Detroit native held prisoner in China comes home. God is so amazing, you know. I appreciate all the love, support. A look at what got him sentenced to prison and how he got out early. Plus, we're tracking showers. All eyes are on the skies and for live, for live radar as Brandon tracks some wet weather that's moving through. But first, breaking news just into the Local 4 newsroom. The Trump administration has just released the much anticipated transcript summary of President Trump's phone call with the president of Ukraine. A memo summarizing that call shows that the president urged the Ukrainian president to probe Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, who sat on the board of a Ukrainian natural gas company. This all comes one day after House Democrats begin an official impeachment inquiry. The fact is that the president of the United States in breach of his constitutional responsibilities, has asked a foreign government to help him in his political campaign at the expense of our national security, as well as undermining the integrity of our elections. That cannot stand. He will be held accountable. No one is above the law. There's just this blatant disregard of the fact that he took an oath to uphold the United States Constitution, that he has to, you know, he can't use the, abuse the power that he has, and he's continuing to do it blatantly in our face, and it's just the only option that we have left. Well, it's only the fourth time in U.S. history that a president has faced official allegations of treason, high crimes, and misdemeanors. Jay Gray takes a closer look. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. Accountability, the speaker and House Democrats now believe, can only come through impeachment. It's just the fourth time a president has faced the process. Here's how it will unfold. Six House committees will investigate President Trump on a wide range of possibly impeachable offenses, including a whistleblower's claim Mr. Trump tried to convince the president of the Ukraine to investigate political rival Joe Biden and his son's ties to a Ukrainian gas company. The White House releasing a memorandum, not a verbatim transcript, of their phone call this morning. The president asking for a favor and suggesting that the Ukrainian leader discuss details with the attorney general and the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. There was no pressure. The president has blasted the inquiry on social media, calling it witch hunt garbage and presidential harassment. It's the single greatest witch hunt in American history, probably in history, but in American history, it's a disgraceful thing. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed the General Assembly this morning. As the Democrats now begin their impeachment inquiry on Capitol Hill, the president still has plans to meet with the leader of the Ukraine here at the UN later today. His work on the sidelines of this summit, anything but business as usual. Jay Gray, Local 4. All right, thank you, Jay. Of course, you want to stick with us here on Local 4 and on ClickOnDetroit.com all day long. We are going to be carrying President Trump's response to the impeachment inquiry live on Local 4 News at 4. Turning our attention now to the forecast and some scattered midday showers that Brandon Roo is tracking for us. Brandon, uh, give us the timeline for all of this. Well, it's tough to say when the line coming at us hasn't really materialized, but we are getting some showers to the north, and I think by 3, 4 o'clock, our concerns go away. But on this Wednesday, wind and wet weather Wednesday, those are the two playmakers. We have low 70s for most, still 69 Harrow, Ontario and Sandusky, but low 70s elsewhere. The winds 10 to 20 out of the south southwest trying to warm us up and occasionally gusting 20 to 30 like we're seeing in Lapeer. That is enough to keep your rattling around on the roads and maybe your fall decorations move jostle a little more than you'd like. But shower chances here in Metro Detroit, especially after one o'clock, should materialize. Scattered rain, maybe isolated thunder through 3.30, 4 o'clock, mid-70s. The evening drive will be dry. And Evra, just a little bit of activity right now in our extreme north zone. New at noon.
A Detroit native held prisoner in China comes home. Our Paula Tupman has this look at what got him sentenced to prison and how he got out early. All grins and wearing a shirt that says blessed, better than a pro ball contract, better than throngs of fans chanting and cheering your name at a stadium. The sound of family on terra firma in the USA as a free man today is the pinnacle for Wendell Brown. Finally, after all these years, after all these years of pain and suffering, I finally get to celebrate with my family. I'm home, I'm back on American soil. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Um, it's, it's a celebration. Brown, a star athlete who played football for King High School in Detroit and parlayed that talent into a Canadian League contract and then traveled abroad to teach football in China, was involved in a bar fight in China in 2016. Wendell says it was self-defense and he was only raising his hands to protect himself. The Chinese government saw it differently and detained him in jail for 20 months to await trial for what amounts to felony assault in that country. He was then sentenced to years in prison, but after concentrated efforts by family to release him, he is free a year early and none too soon. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all so much. He stepped off the plane from China this morning into the waiting arms of his loved ones, and he was graceful, grateful, and gracious. I want to thank my friends, my lawyer, the American Embassy, and all the government officials that got involved. I hope you'll join us in our later newscast. This one is worth waiting for. Wait until you see Wendell's reaction from his grandmother. I'll see you this evening for Local 4 News. Paula Tutman, Local 4 Reporting. Well, you can see his family is certainly happy to see him home as he is happy to be home as well. Developing here at noon, fire investigators are working to get to the bottom of a deadly house fire in Sterling Heights. You're looking at a video from the scene there. This is right in the area of Van Dyke and 17 Mile. Now, we do know that a man in his 60s was killed in this fire, but there's still no word on a possible cause or if anyone else is hurt. Of course, we'll continue to follow this story for you and keep you updated on that. Meantime, local police and the DEA carry out 10 raids at homes early this morning. Sky Fort video shows one person in handcuffs on the ground just outside of a home near the Detroit Warren border. Warren Mayor Jim Fount says the raid was targeting a major drug organization that's responsible for distributing heroin, fentanyl and crack cocaine. We're going to hear more from officials about this raid this afternoon around 2 p.m. We're going to stream that for you on clickondetroit.com. So as the UAW strike against General Motors enters now its 10th day, there's a big name ally who showed up on the picket line today. That would be presidential candidate Bernie Sanders. Working people of this country want justice. The working people of this country are not looking sympathetically today to General Motors, I'll tell you that. Well, the strike that began just after midnight 10 days ago revolves around compensation, medical benefits, and temporary worker contracts. And at this hour, we have not received word of any concrete steps that have been taken by either side to resolve this strike. Of course, we'll keep you updated on any, any developments there. So to come here on Local 4 News at noon, the world's oceans and mountains are in trouble. And so are we. That's according to a new report. We're going to break it down for you and look at what young climate change activists are planning to do this weekend. But first, concerned parents talk e-cigarettes on Capitol Hill. I'm joining the movement of moms who as parents against vaping e-cigarettes and saying enough is enough. Our kids should not be the guinea pigs. Find out how this might have prompted a shakeup at e-cigarette manufacturer Juul.